Connor Burns and Simeon Vernbaum, the people have spoken. I get a new DM every single week asking to have you guys on. Last time you guys were on was August. A year ago, we kicked off the call room, which absolutely legendary, historic. So pleasure to welcome you guys back on almost a year after we kicked that off. How are you guys doing this evening? Oh, we're great. Yeah, ready to ready to light it up again. Good, Dominic. Thanks for having us back. First podcast with you guys, with each other. What's that like? I mean, we don't have to deal with Connor's dog and all that sort of stuff we used to put up with. Yeah, and I have a feeling it's going to be a lot smoother, honestly. Yeah. A lot less um, a lot less time consuming. <laughs> Connor, how's the dog doing? Uh, word has been doing good. I don't, don't really see it much, but yeah. I heard, I heard something. I forget where I saw it, but I heard that Strava is now, like they're selling, they basically have Strava for dogs, but it's on Strava. <laughs> So like you can you can track your dog's mileage. It's so, like right around his collar or something. Oh. Yeah, it has to do with the collar. So what what was his name? Freddie or am I thinking? Yeah. Of, okay. How much mileage is Freddie logging if he had Strava? Ooh, um, probably, I don't know. probably more than Connor right now. Yeah, honestly. Well, he he goes for runs with my little brother sometimes, so probably pretty decent. Let's talk about Strava. You guys had to get off the platform, or maybe just create secret ones that I I personally follow. Uh. Is it a little? Is it a little sad? I can cut that. <laughs> is it a little sad? Uh, is it a little sad not having the the followers in the comments? Yeah, it's definitely like I don't know, like the the gratification or like just the interaction with like you know people who want to you know I don't know follow us or whatever. Like it's it's always fun interacting with people on Strava, and it is definitely a little disappointing not to have that anymore. Yeah, I've been thinking about it, and I think my plan for moving forward is obviously like not posting runs or workouts, but I want to start posting more engaging stuff, like letting the people know like what I'm up to, because I'm not. I mean, I feel like no one really knows like like where I've been, and so I would have liked to to post more on Strava, and I'd like to tell people when I'm racing or the best I can to inform people on that. So I'm using Strava to do that. So does this mean you're gonna start logging disc golf activities? Uh, I mean, maybe. Who knows? Hours in study hall? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Not, not too many hours in that. <laughs> I, I got to ask you guys. Uh, no one's going to find your private account. You guys are following the rules just fine. Who who has the better private name? Uh, that's that's not, mine. Definitely mine. Yeah, that's not, yeah. that's not much of a question. Definitely Connor. <laughs> I honestly forget what your name is. I just, the profile pictures on both of them crack me up. Uh, so, so funny. <laughs> Um, I do have to ask, we may have covered this in August podcast. Uh, if we did, I'm forgetting. And if we did, we didn't do it extensively. So I feel like I should bring it back, back up again. And both of you guys can speak to this. Simeon, so, what was the situation with the guy who wrote novels in your comment section? When did that start? And uh, are we sure our man's is okay, given he can't create stories anymore? Uh, I don't even remember. I mean, it was it was the spring and summertime. I know that. And I think we got to like, I think it was over 10 chapters. Um, but yeah, I mean, it stopped before I stopped sharing my Strava because he needed a bit of a break and <laughs> kind of playing out of content. But yeah, that was a pretty extensive series and that was pretty fun. Connor, what was your take on, on the novel in Simeon's comment section? Oh, this is entertainment, you know. There's a, I think it started or like the, like game popularity, like when the time when I didn't have a phone. Um, so I, I think I lost a phone in September of the summer, but yeah, I really missed a lot of it, and I came back, and I was like, Simeon, what is, plus this is crazy, but no, it was pretty entertaining. Simeon, is that the craziest thing a fan has done for you? Yeah, probably, honestly. I mean, that much time and that much effort, like, that's that's a lot of effort, like, every day to write a whole, like, another chapter. That's, that's almost a full-time job. <laughs> and they're still up there, right, for people who have no clue what we're talking about, can go back and yeah. read them? I'm pretty sure they're still up there. I mean, I'm not sure where they would go. You got to co-author a book with this guy, NIL. You can make money off of it. Connor Burns can write the forward. Who knows what we'll call it. Connor, speaking of fans, off the top of your head, what's the what's the craziest, what, appropriate for the podcast, craziest DM you've gotten from a fan recently? I don't even know. I mean, I'm definitely dropping relevance. I don't get that many DMs anymore. But oh. yeah, it's, it's an ego hit. But no, I don't know. <laughs> I gotta ask, Walmart Lord. sub five attempt is that coming soon? That that'll that'll boost you in relevance, man. Yeah, that'll come after I'm actually running again, probably. Um, but no, I, I feel it's a little repetitive at this point. Can't really do the same thing twice. 
but you didn't break five. You were right there. It's like, you know, you could say the same thing about track races. Maybe they'll do like the target mile or something and then break five there. <laughs> or I'll change it a little. You have to stage a bidding war between all the grocery stores and be like, who do you, who do you want me? Which which of you guys want to me to run a sub five mile in your store and pay me $20,000? Yeah, you crazy today. NIL deal. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I feel like people do the stupidest stuff in Walmarts. Like I, the, on my uh, For You page the other day, like I saw someone, he pretended to be a cashier and he checked this guy's receipt and he like ate the receipt. I don't know if you guys seen that. <laughs> I saw that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like people do the craziest stuff for clicks these days. So at least at least you're gaining some fitness as you're getting the clicks. So are you injured currently? Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, I've been, Yeah. How are we dealing with it? Um, I don't know. It's been just it hasn't really improved or got worse in like the last three months. So that's been really frustrating. But yeah, I don't know. I mean it's just plugging away and hopefully one day something something gets better, but trying different things, I guess. Is the aqua jogging villain arc going crazy right now? No, no, I haven't done that in a minute. I'm mostly like biking and then like running like off and on right now. It's a problem with my Achilles, but yeah, it's been really persistent, which sucks. Achilles, in my opinion, worst injury. And here's why. It's not a bone. And so it's so hard to know whether you should push or back off. Like with a bone injury, you get an MRI, they're like, take eight weeks off and here's the protocol back. Achilles, it's like some sometimes some stuff works, sometimes it doesn't. What's that experience been like trying to figure out if something is good for it, bad for it, pushing it, not pushing it too much? Yeah, I mean, I don't know any other word besides infuriating. Like, I remember when I first felt it back in December, I was like, okay, maybe I'll try, maybe I'll take like a day or two off and get back to training. And then it's like, okay, maybe I'll take like a few more days off and then a week off and then just keep that cycle just kept repeating. So, yeah, it's mean. I don't know. It was it was my own fault. Um, I'm pretty sure I had a great fall training session, and then the first week back from winter break, I ran 93 miles at like 550 average pace. So maybe not the smartest first week back of training. And that's most likely what caused it. But yeah, it's just been, it's been really sucking to get back. Has it been helpful knowing that like Jerry, if you look at Bowerman, so many of those athletes have gotten injured, bounced back remarkably. I think like trauma Gordy's the easiest example to bring up guys had like six major surgeries in the past, like five years and has made a bunch of world teams last year, had a surgery and bounced back made a world team. Um, as well as your dad, you know, coaching the sport for a long time has been helpful relying on them and trusting in them to, to get you in the right spot and just seeking advice in general. Yeah. I mean, that's great. I mean, there's, if there's one place to get injured, um, it's Oregon, you know, there's obviously a ton of resources to help get back to it. And, you know, and, you know having faith that I will get back someday, um, you know, hopefully sooner, but I never thought I, in the world I'd be, this, I'd be dealing with it for this long. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, hoping that there is a light at the end of the tunnel at some point and trusting that, you know, with the resources and the coach I have around me that I can definitely get back to where I was and obviously a lot further than that. Let's talk about these cross training sessions. You're on the bike, you're watching something, you're listening to something. If you're listening to something, podcast, music, what's the breakdown here to get through a cross training session? Yeah, I'm always, always watching TV shows, movies, just whatever. I discovered that was the meta back when I was on the boost in high school. So got to, got to stick with it. I just, I don't understand the people who, can just like run with music like i mean i guess but it's like you're there's an entertainment factor missing and i don't know can you tell me like, you were watching yeah. netflix while ripping like a 420 on the boost last spring yeah i did that that's all the time. crazy that's crazy so i mean i don't know what are your thoughts on this yeah i mean i listen to music of course oh, like everyone that's does, gonna say. Connor. but connor <laughs> like, i think i've heard him play music maybe once or twice like he like ask him to name a song he might like have to think for a while like honestly no. like he just does not listen to music connor loves one song he sent it to me like five times it's called like mathematical disrespect or something <laughs> yeah other than like meme <laughs> songs he has a bunch yeah. of like goofy songs that he'll play but no like yeah no, like serious stuff so, I mean, you yourself had an injury a few months ago i think in the fall take me through that and ultimately how you got over it yeah, I mean, I had a really great start to the fall, training super well. Um, you know, I raced that once, and right before I was set to race again, I, I went on a run, and when I came back, I was like, man, my back is pretty sore. 
And then, like, later that day, I could, like, barely even walk. So, obviously, we got an MRI, and I busted my sacrum pretty bad. Uh, so, I had to take a long time off. And it was my first, like, bone injury. So, it was weird, like, not being able to run for, like, over a month. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've gotten over it. I've been training strong for, like, the past two months. And, I mean, I, I plan on racing outdoors. I'm all set to go. I got to ask, I think I saw on Strava, you were on your aqua jogging grind. That's probably where the question came from, Connor. Uh, what was that month like of trying to maintain fitness and also just keep a positive mindset as it was like your first injury in a while? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was pretty hard mentally. Um, just being obviously all that change and then uh, then more change on top of that. It was, in the moment, it feels pretty negative. Um, but yeah, I mean, I tried to do like, I'd, I'd say maybe like five to 10 hours of aerobic stimulus still. Obviously it couldn't be that much because one of the biggest factors to healing bones is just energy. So you don't want to deplete your energy sources too much where it delays the healing. Um, so aqua jogging, I mean, you can't really go too hard aqua jogging, I would say compared to other cross training methods. And it took a load off my back. So that was nice. And yeah, I mean, for a while, it was just me and some other boys go in every morning and strap on the belts and go for like an hour. And, you know, it was, it was kind of fun in the moment. Um, obviously I would never want to go back to it, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. I got to ask super shoes. Last time we talked, you hadn't tried them. What's your take on super shoes? They're pretty dang good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely using them now. Uh, if, if I wasn't, I'd be, I'd, I'd be insane because doing these sessions without super shoes, you have to be a madman. Um, so yeah, I'm using them and man, they're not too bad. <laughs> they're not too bad. Connor, give him some crap for this. We were telling this all last spring. You wouldn't listen to us. I mean, yeah, he, I like to see the errors of air of his ways now, but nah, I'm not accepting that it was an air. I don't think it was an air. It's just different. <laughs> Brad would have run like 345 and he'll always wonder what if, if he, if he wore yeah. super shoes and training. <laughs> I also want to ask you about the training aspect because in previous conversations, you know, it's pretty well known that you tailored your training very specifically to where you live, South Dakota, and, mm -hmm. you know, horrible weather year round. And you also definitely had an approach with your coach of trying to stay healthy 100% of the year and just like being ready to race. So you did less mileage, uh, didn't necessarily attack the workouts as hard as some other people would have. What's the transition now been like to Jerry, who's just infamously known for throwing people to the well right away? Yeah, I mean, in the fall, I can confidently say that my fitness was was well above my fitness had ever been. Like it was like, like if I could go back to that fitness compared to high school, like I would have run so much faster. Um, so I was handling it pretty well. I felt strong. It's just it was just too much for my. I didn't. I don't think I adjusted slowly enough, which is it's my fault. I was stupid. I I got too greedy. Um, but yeah, I mean now. Honestly, I'm not doing much different than high school. I mean, we pretty much decided the same thing as my high school coach. We want to be healthy and we want to be racing. So, yeah, I can't do as much miles as, as I would like to. And I could with this with this program. Um, so I have to have some discipline and, and run less and just focus on staying healthy, which, I mean, it's fine. But eventually, yeah, I'm excited to get back to the point when I can run more mileage that I would like to do and really focus on being the best I can. A question for both of you guys. What was the transition like originally coming from, I mean, Connor, I know you trained like an absolute madman in high school, so maybe this isn't applicable to you, but uh, what was the transition like from high school in that mindset and being on top of the world in high school to then going to one of the most prestigious running universities in the world, uh, historically absolutely dominant throughout the years? Did you, what was like the balance of maintaining that confidence coming out of high school while also as you kind of mentioned, not trying to get too greedy. It sounds like both of you kind of did a little bit. Uh, how do you balance that? And in hindsight, is there anything you would have changed looking back? And just talk to that like transition and how hard it is being one of the top kids in the country and then coming into one of the best programs in the country. Yeah, I mean, so coming into the fall, I had kind of a plan. Like I knew I wanted to run, you know, a lot higher mileage in high school because that's what makes you better. You know, running higher mileage and more volume makes you better. And I think like the, the body of like the workouts and like the intensity was probably similar. I did a lot similar to what I did in high school and, um, really similar actually, but it's like, instead of running 70, 75 miles a week, I was running a hundred ish miles a week. 
throughout most of the fall. And my, I think my body handled it pretty well. It's just when you make that transition of such a big jump in mileage, you're really not going to see, despite what people think, like the fitness gains right away. It's like a delayed reaction almost. And I mean, I knew that coming in. Obviously, I still want to be really good last year, but I knew there was kind of be like a delay in like the in the results I would see. But I'm obviously not seeing those now because I can't consistently train. But you know, it was it was. I think had I managed to stay healthy, I would have had a really good spring season um, with that consistent base under me and that like the jump in mileage. But I don't know. I mean, it's, it is what it is now. Yeah, I feel like we both struggled from the same thing, like coming from training solo to coming to train with a really good team and a really good program is that it's really easy to work hard. Like like every week you can do like crazy sessions and run every run pretty hard and it doesn't feel that hard mentally. Like you're like, yeah, I mean, this, this feels good. I feel strong. But at the end of the day, it's just a lot more load on your body, even if you don't really feel that. Um, and I think that got us both is just, we are feeling so good because we are training with people and having fun with it. And yeah, we didn't, we weren't um, too careful about like progressing our load slowly. Reflecting a year ago, I mean, as I'm the same age as you guys, we graduated in high school the same year. Like I feel like time has flown by and last March feels like an eternity ago. Is it so weird to think a year ago outdoor track hadn't even started? Yeah, it's, Definitely kind of humbling to look back and realize where I was then and where I am now, but that's just part of the process. So, Connie, you mentioned hit to the ego, you know, not getting as many DMs these days. I'll ask this question of both of you. Maybe Simeon's getting hit up still, but does it, is it kind of refreshing not to be in the limelight like you guys were last spring? Like, I know you guys loved it. I know you guys appreciated it because it was so good for the sport, but also at the same time, is it kind of nice to take a little bit of a step back and, and not be, always in the news, always in the headlines and always having that pressure where like, Connor, you definitely experienced this when you were chasing the 5k record last year. Every time you lined up on the track, people were talking about it, you know, positive or negative. Yeah, no, I mean, it was honestly, it was pretty nice. I always enjoyed it. Um, positive or negative comments. I always thought it was hilarious, but yeah, I didn't mind it at all. I mean, it's, it's just different. I wouldn't say it's better or worse, but it's, it's just a different experience, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, it is kind of fun, though, like having no one really know like what your plan is or what you're doing, like what you're doing. And so I got some enjoyment out of that. And it's still kind of fun. But I guess after this, it'll be a little bit less mysterious. But I don't know, I'm excited to open up and, and do some stuff and just have people realize, oh, he's, he's not just he didn't just disappear. I send them to you from time to time, Simeon, but is it funny still seeing reels pop up from last year? People making Batman edits, people making all sorts of edits <laughs> to this day. It's so funny. Yeah, I mean, it's funny to see them. I'm also like, dang, I cannot, I cannot peak in high school. Like, I need to stop. I need to stop with this high school stuff and get some college results in because I do not want to be have people living off my high school days. Speaking of uh, current high school running, how much do you guys follow it and uh, any bold takes you guys want to throw around? Uh, I mean... Yeah, last the, the other weekend was pretty crazy. Um, it bounces, yeah, bounces. what else? Insane. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's just a continuation of kind of the last two, two, three years where high school are just reaching a new level. And some people were saying like this year in high school was kind of a down year, but I guess not. <laughs> right. Man, I'm, I'm super excited to see what they do at Arcadia. I can see like the boys doing some crazy stuff, like 820s like low, like stuff like that. I think it's going to be nuts. Festival miles, four kids broke four minutes in the mile and the depth was off the charts. I went on record many podcasts with these kids saying, I don't think their class is going to be as strong as your guys is. And most of them agreed with me. Well, what's your guys take on this? Do you think with how fast people have run recently that we'll see it? Or do you think it'll kind of uh, tailor off a little bit? Cause even it was interesting with your class. Like I feel like no one really ran particularly well indoors. Like even Connor, you ran 359, you're like, that was a bad race for me. You know what I mean? And and this year, it's kind of the opposite where it's like they're running faster than you'd think. So who knows? It's like, can they continue it? Can they keep it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so hard to tell. I mean, it could be like a two-mile 5K year. Like you, it's really hard to tell like what people are going to focus on and what, what the hype is going to be around. But I mean, honestly, I think if a group of kids really, really want to break four, they probably could and they probably get 405 four or five guys under the barrier. Um, I think that's just how high school running is going to be now. 
last year at this time, I probably wouldn't have said that, but I just feel like every class is going to be just as good. Connor? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know about four or five, but I guess it's kind of looking at, there's always kids crawling out of the woodworks now. I mean, there's just a bunch of kids who you n- n- never heard the name before and they're running low four zero. Like it's just, yeah, it's just a different era, I guess. That's kind of coming in. I got to ask you this question, Connor, uh, Simeon, I'm not sure. I'm sure that the guys discussed it on the team, but I personally texted Connor about this. So that's why I'm asking him. If you have thoughts, you can chime in after him. Uh, Gatorade player of the year. Jojo Jordan wins NXN. Drew Griffith goes undefeated. Neither win it. Take on this. Oh, I mean, I love Danny Simmons, but if I feel like if you don't win a national title, it's it's hard. Um, I, I mean, Danny Simmons, he's such a good guy, but you get 13th at NXN. I feel like that's that's definitely a rough one to a rough decision. Um, yeah, I mean, he's such a nice guy, but in the end, I I do think Drew Gifford got robbed there. But, that's a tough thing. Danny's yeah. like the nicest kid in the world, <laughs> so I don't want to I don't want to talk ill of him. Uh, so I'm not like love the kid to death. Such a good person, such an amazing athlete. But it's just like who is voting? <laughs> like yeah, I mean, well, he didn't he beat JoJo like in state or something like. Weren't they in-state rivals? I, I can like- I can see a potential argument, like a Stephen A. Smith take. That's just like, what did you just say? Where Danny has JoJo, but Drew Griffith undefeated yeah, runs fourteen twenty one on a hard Pennsylvania course. That's really, really iffy decision. If yeah. I'm gonna say something, that's tough. That's tough. But it's also just back to back years. Crazy. Kudos to Danny though, and he ran so well last track season. I mean, so. he, if you if you doubted it, like he's definitely running. Gatorade player that you level now with that insane 5k but yeah in the moment i don't know it's also so interesting because nxn connor you can definitely speak to this because i know you're salty about your senior year nxn like the the it's such a weird meet an event where it's like someone like danny going into the meet favorite other people who are supposed to be top five like just don't place top five it's always weird conditions the competition sometimes gets to people people go out fast people go out slow it's just such a weird race where I feel like it never shakes up how people think it's going to. Yeah. I mean, it's just another aspect of cross country. That's just so random. Like you never know what's going on with people's training or how healthy is like someone maybe a little sick or something coming in or just what, you know, whatever happens. Like we looking at the splits live, I saw Danny go out in like a hundredth place or something. I'm like, I feel like that's not what you do if you're trying to win, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's just so random. Of course, we have a lot of guys coming up in the sport who were really, really good last year as like sophomores, juniors. Is it cool to still be kind of involved in the high school running scene in the sense of like you guys ran against Danny, you guys ran against JoJo, I feel like before anyone knew who JoJo was. JoJo was like, yeah, I went to Brooks PR. I'm like, I don't remember you whatsoever. I was like, I can maybe remember you in some instances, but I was like, I don't remember you. Um, And like Clay Shively, uh, he ran Festival Miles, he ran Brooks, great kid as well. Is it cool to still kind of have one foot in the high school running community because some of the people you raced against last year are still in it. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely cool to see, you know, guys, you kind of, you knew and are kind of are sort of close with this, go, do good. You know, you're always rooting for them to run fast and succeed, you know, and you know, some guys you're close to with others and you're just talking to them a lot and, you know, I play Fortnite with a couple of guys there. So it's like, you know, it's, it's definitely cool to have connections there and see them doing well. See me? Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel like I still have, some like connection to it. Um, I love just watching, um, like see how these guys are dominating. I feel like people racing against our class last year, um, come back like so much stronger than people who are maybe just coming up, um, cause they have so much more experience and I think it's really going to show, I think the top guys are going to be really, really good. A few more questions before I get to some listener questions off the top of my head. Ambitions, uh, Connor, I know you're going through an injury. So if, if you don't want to talk to this, that's totally fine. Um, ambitions for the coming few months as we as we look to kick off the track season soon. What's your kind of mindset going into the season? Uh, I mean, I'm still always hoping to it's going to end next week and I'll be back to training in two weeks. So that's always kind of my goal is, you know, I'll get maybe a month, a month or so of training under me and maybe I'll try to run like Portland Track Fest or just some other random meets here and there. And, you know, if I don't have an NCAA season, which I'm always hoping I do and I'm training for that, but if it gets to the point where I'm passing the, the point of no return, then, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to run fast at like, you know, like semi pro meets this season or this summer. So, you know, she's doing everything I can to hopefully get to race as soon as I can. 
No, I mean, originally I planned on like wanting to run like a really fast 5k and, and 15. I was like, before, like I got injured, I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna run a couple of good, like 5k's this year. But ever since I got injured, I've kind of had the transition to more like less mileage, more speed type of work. So I think I'm gonna focus on the eight and 15 all year. And honestly, I have no idea where my fitness is. So it's hard to, it's hard to make goals, but I mean, I think I can be just as competitive as I was in high school in the NCAA. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to prove that. Let's talk about Oregon off the track, off priest trail, off running entirely. What's life been like as college freshman? Uh, well, I would say school, but we didn't really do much of that here. Yeah. Um, we do have like, uh, you know, online class and then we have like one, I go to like, two, I go to class twice a week and, you know, I do a few online assignments here and there and I'm um, just kind of chill, you know, hang out, pick up a lot, pick up various hobbies. You know, I was in the Fortnite for a while, um, Brawl Stars, you know, other non-video game hobbies. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we'll come back after lunch and we'll be like, all right, boys, it's a Fortnite day, you know, uh, some days we'll come back and be like, oh, it's a pickleball day. Um, so Ooh, like, pickleball. I don't know. yeah, we do some like random side quests. I don't know. It's pretty nice. It's actually a lot of fun. Connor, you mentioned going to class. Sam McDonald threw out some beef on the podcast. I'd like to give you guys the opportunity to respond, especially now that the results are in. Um, I don't think I ever actually like compared grades, but there's no way I could have got a worse grade than her. So I think I ended up with like a high 90 in that class. So I don't think she's topping that with some 80 on, on her exams. Just saying. Just saying. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, I think Middle I of the pack up. here? Or like in the last place? I think I beat her on two exams and she beat me on one. I think that's how it went. I, I did really good on the first and last one. I kind of fell asleep in the middle. I didn't really do much school. For some reason, I shouldn't feel like it that, that, that couple of weeks. But yeah, no, I, I came back and I clutched a good one for the, in the final. <laughs> yeah, I think I got a better grade in there. Okay, so I got to ask you guys, does having other athletes in the classes that you know, does that motivate you? to actually do better. That's what it sounds like. If the Dean of Oregon's listening, she's going to put all the athletes in the same class. Get a hundred out <laughs> yeah. of everyone. Uh, there's, there's certainly some healthy competition, um, some healthy <laughs> cooperation. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely fun. We try to, we, de- we try to coordinate schedules so that we at least match a few classes. Yeah. I got to ask you on the non running sports Oregon front. I don't know what their basketball team's looking like this year, but the, foot- the football team was crushing it. Take on that. They lost to UW twice, which was rough, but they were so good all year. What was it like being a student? Uh, what was the quarterback's name? Oh, Bo Nix. Yeah, he was a dog. He was great. Yeah, yeah. should have got the Heisman. Should have. Should have been Washington. <laughs> you guys got any football games? Yeah. I uh, like one or two, I think. One or two. Yeah. We didn't go to too many. Yeah. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. Listener questions. We've got more than we could ever handle, so we'll just we'll just go through them. Uh, first question comes from Connor underscore Burnsy. Uh, this guy looks really fast. Profile picture is from Nike Outdoor Nationals. You guys should follow him. He asked, who's the real Slim Shady? Simeon? I'm the real Slim Shady, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to have people see this. How are people going to yeah. see this new cut? Uh, this might be on YouTube. Uh runner shorts asks favorite pastime activity outside of running. Sounds like Fortnite. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that phase is kinda over though. I think it's kind of migrating more to like pickleball or spike ball. Yeah. As the weather gets nice, so we do more outdoor activities, but and also Connor is big in the Brawl Stars right now. He uh, rages probably like five times a day in, no. in our living room. There's a uh, <laughs> buddy. If, if I get like crap random teammates, what am I supposed to do? They just freaking sell the game every time. Yeah, I'm trying to be competitive, and I just get like idiots like selling my rank. Yeah, he has a little, just a small addiction to that game. Uh, my brother, who does not understand running very well, so you'll understand why I asked this question. He said, "Do you take a day off?" Yes. Uh, yeah. When I'm when I'm like training full, ideally, probably not. But right now, I take you know days off a lot. Unfortunately, Sean asked favorite Fortnite season. 
probably either season six was pretty fire or the classic chapter two season two that's a pretty popular answer so i mean what was your favorite fortnite season <laughs> you know I'm, I'm a new player to the game i don't really know about seasons that much but you know, i like the recent ones those ones are good I was laughing when you guys were talking there, not because of your response, Connor, but rather going through these questions. Uh, Trevor, <laughs> Trevor's got the wrong man. Trevor asked for Simeon. Why the buzz? Exclamation, question mark, exclamation, question mark. Why the buzz, Simeon? <laughs> uh, I want to try something new. You know, I had the same little middle part for a while. Um, so decided to go complete opposite. And also it's kind of like supposed to symbolize, you know, I got like a little steroid injection in my Achilles last week. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take like three or four days off is the plan. And then I'm going to buzz my hair and I'll come back. Pain's going to be gone. So far, that is not the case, but uh, the hope is still there. We're working on it. Hope yeah, so can you still make there. The, the thumbnail Connor burns you on steroids. <laughs> Cooper asked, what's your advice for a runner who has been consistently having bad races? Mm, just hang in there and try and keep consistency in training because one day, I mean, you'll you will like through i mean i had a lot of bad races and you know there's also a lot of good ones in there so you just gotta you just gotta keep plugging away and have faith that down the line there will be a good race coming well, so. connor connor carrying the conversation uh carrying the advice today uh this one i mean simian you can give your take on this jm bond 31 asked ask connor burns about the missouri running scene oh uh, i mean how are the officials these days your friends <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, no, I mean, I, there's there's some good officials there. I, I, a lot of the officials are good people. I mean, did I, did I say something bad about the officials before? I don't think I did. Oh, maybe dude, I did. You had such problems with them last track season. Yeah, maybe, sure you maybe, there's, maybe there's a few times where Couple I got runs. some scuffles. and But no, I think on the whole... Like the rock, paper, scissors? Didn't you oh, just that... get DQ'd for something once? Yeah, that was pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what was the story again? Um... I, was, I played rock, paper, scissors with some kid uh, during, like, my state, like, the qualifier race to state, like, during the, to the 32. And the I think some coach was, like, really mad and was, like, complaining to the official, and they tried to, like, they wanted to DQ me or something. But, oh, yeah. It's, Imagine well. trying to get one of the top two mallards in the country <laughs> DQ'd from the district. <laughs> you yeah. really have to be out to get the burns if you're doing that. Yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. But, yeah. Missouri distance support. running team. Brian's on the come up. Brian ran 418. He's he's getting Ooh, there. Okay. He's not bad. Simeon, take on the Missouri. <laughs> uh, I actually cannot name anything about it. I couldn't yeah. name a oh. singular fact about the Missouri distance running. Kind of lost. Oh, that's not a very interesting question. I'll be honest. You probably cut a lot of this out. No, I, I, it was entertaining to me. Okay, this question comes from a username that is just a bunch of letters and numbers. Where has Simeon been this whole time? Simeon, what's your response? In the shadows. Hey, speaking of Batman, Batman 2 announced 2025. How do we feel about this? I mean, are you starring in it? Have they sent over the contract? <laughs> no. I mean, they probably haven't chosen the actors yet, honestly. They're probably, they're probably going to do like some recruiting or something and see, see the potential. And, you know, we'll see. Did you guys like Christopher Nolan's Batman more or the newest one? Please tell me you've seen them. Yeah, I say I even know who Christopher Nolan is. I'm not gonna lie. That's crazy. That's absurd. <laughs> you can probably name like I probably know like five actors, bro. He's a director. You don't know who Christopher Nolan exactly. is? A director. Yeah, I just don't know about that stuff. <laughs> you can't report to be Batman without knowing who Christopher Nolan is. This is crazy. I probably haven't even seen all the Batman movies, to be honest. <laughs> Moving on, cool. for the sake of your publicity, this is crazy. <laughs> Mr. Batman doesn't even know his director. Okay, uh, this isn't a question. This is literally all caps. Please tell Simeon that he can be Batman as long as I get to be Robin. <laughs> What's your response to that? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Um, we kind of covered this in the beginning, but Luke asked, when is the return to Strava happening? Never. Mm. When I when I'm a hobby jogger, can you come back on in the summer? Easy runs? Um, no, 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 probably not. Okay, <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, Aiden asked, I don't know if there's truth behind this, Connor. Has Connor ever ramped a minivan? I don't know what that means. 
<laughs> was, that, uh, was that Aiden Mikowski you asked that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can say no comment. Yeah, no comment. Someone named Connor asked, what is the biggest improvement someone has made that you've seen? Uh, I gotta go with my, yeah, I got to go with my boy Moketeer on this, man. He had a, he had a crazy one-year progression, bro. What was it, 336 to 328? <laughs> He kind of he went like thirteen fifty to twelve fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes a lot of um, dedication, a lot of hard work. Uh, I'm not sure if there's some truth to this. Another weird username, and people for future episodes ask questions, like <laughs> people just state stuff. Someone said dorm room strides. <laughs> what does that mean? You guys are doing strides in your dorm room? You don't even live. Yeah, we live in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's trying to fabricate uh, some stories. This person actually asked a question. They just said Simeon's ice skating question mark. Oh, this is a good story we could bring up. Yeah, yeah. I, went, I skated on Hayward one day. So pretty much, um, it was when I was injured. So I was biking on the bike and I like, went out to Hayward. Actually, I don't even know how much I can tell of this because, yeah, no. I pretty much just put on a pair of ice skates and went out and the whole the whole entire track was completely ice like you could go on every part of it and took a couple laps i don't know did some skating yeah that was that was definitely one of the coolest moments uh, that i've had since i've been to eugene another question not sure what this one means will the villain will the villains become super seniors what does that mean <laughs> if you're I, I hope not six yeah. years. <laughs> I don't know the way the way it's been going. You never know. <laughs> that, was definitely, that was definitely not the goal coming in here, but yeah, we're gonna be around a long time. <laughs> never, you don't know this point, Rick. I do want to ask you, Simeon, uh, and and Connor. Like, let's say training from now until June, like went like perfect. Connor, your Achilles magically heals. And you've got stronger Achilles than ever. Well, you guys take fifth years. You guys going one two at every meet like you did last year? Or you think Drew, Danny, JoJo, would they give you a run for your money? In, in like in four years? No, like if you guys took a fifth year right now. Oh, in high school. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 what? Yeah, what? It's not even a question. <laughs> Will you beat them? Or <laughs> Are you, is that what you're like, saying? Like we're racing high schoolers as freshmen in college? Yeah. Oh, you're that's... Winning. Yeah, no, okay. I, mean, I feel like it's not a very hot take. I'm not saying it is. It's still, no. still want to ask the question. You never know. One of these kids could get mad. They could start some beef. It could be the next thing. It could be the next. <laughs> Does that mean you don't trust in Connor? Okay. I don't know, honestly. 1338 is crazy. Is that what Danny ran? What do you even hurt for a bit? I don't know. 1338 and what did Griffin? Run? Nuts. All right, maybe not a 5K. Yeah, not definitely. I don't even know if I could beat Danny in a 5K. To I mean, Tyrone looked so good last year, running like. 1401. Yeah. Blew everyone. I'll, I'll stand by this. Might be a hot take. The 5K is not a high school event. Like, I don't, it doesn't count for high school. Right. It's not a crazy pick. take for the guy sitting next to you. He never ran one. No, it's not a high school event. They don't run it at the state meet or anything. That's not, it's not an event in high school. That's a crazy blow at the guy sitting yeah, next to you. Buddy's jealous he never got a fast 5K time in high school. <laughs> okay. Hillary, Hillary asked, How much do you bench? Ooh, in uh in high school I benched 155 once was my uh, PR. Yeah, buddy, I I did a plate the other day in practice like it was nothing. I three I three repped a plate after not benching for like three years. Yeah, I don't get it. Connor can bench a lot. Probably the shoulders. He's got the, the premium build. I honestly can probably bench like 125. <laughs> Fair. You run fast, so you you get that card. Um, Gabriel asked, send me an opinion on vultures too. Is that even out yet? <laughs> I mean, he just vultured. Vultures <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, even out yet, bro. What? Uh, okay, so, opinions on vultures is probably what he meant. I don't yeah. <laughs> bro, got that early axe. <laughs> yeah, you got that early axe. Uh, I would say it's a 9 out of 10. I would say, I, I, I will say Carnival, like maybe the most popular song on it, sucks. I hate that song. Maybe one of Kanye's songs. Some of Instagram songs. reels, and I'm like, stop playing this song. Yeah, especially in edits. It just makes me cringe every time. Like, that song's terrible. But there's probably, like, six or seven songs in there that I would rate nines out of tens. Like, they're so good. Another question, and again, not really a question. They just said, Carson didn't even ask. He just said, dorm room tour. No period, no question mark. Not sure what that means over audio. 
Uh, yeah, let's, I'll give you. I'll go ahead and give you a verbal dorm room tour. Here we got. Um, we got our kitchen here. We got our our dorm. Or we got our rooms. Room, bathroom. Same in the other half. There, there's your there's your dorm room uh, dorm room tour. Washer and dryer, TV. Yeah. <laughs> got a nice premium couch. Who's got Who's got the nicest room? Yeah. Mm, I'm not gonna lie. Simeon has a, a little better of an aesthetic going. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd have the better gaming setup. Definitely. So I not think it's yeah. Uh, Connor Burns versus Simeon Fortnite one v one. Again, not even a question. I'm assuming he's asking yeah. who's gonna win. Yeah. Actually, I mean, if, it's, if it's box buddy, fans, is, I buddy, can hold buddy, my own. Buddy, I'm not buddy, even trying. Buddy, I would play for like you're a delusional. Box, you're I, delusional, I, buddy. It's like eight to ten. Nah, nah, you're delusional. I can nearly beat that's a crazy. box fight. So I'm not that's that's not that's a sad question, bro. I mean, it's not fair, honestly, because like he hasn't been playing very long. But yeah, he's, he is a little delusional. Bree with four E's and then a dot and then B with like seven E's asked, have you ever had roasted duck? This is fighting words. I think they go to Stanford. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, I've never heard of them. Yeah, no. That low-key sounds like the type of thing people in Missouri would eat. I don't know if that's a their own thing. I think it might be a thing, actually. Like, I think there's like right. roasted duck stew. Like straight up, I think that exists. No, I, I think that's definitely a thing. I've just never had it. Carl asked, "How was the Riz in college?" Mm. No comment. Yeah, no. ACP dot running asked, "How's it gonna feel to get smoked by your brother Connor?" <laughs> Fighting words. Well, he probably could be me right now. <laughs> I've been running like twenty five minutes a day on and off, but no, it's definitely really exciting to see them. Both my younger brothers are now doing so well and, you know, potentially on the tracks they're on might run faster than me um, in a few years. So that's definitely exciting to watch their progress. Connor, for some context on this question I'm about to ask you, I had this guy on the podcast and we were talking about high school training and I, I brought you up as an example and I mentioned the 10 mile tempo you once did, like 458 average. So there's a context for the question. Paul Stafford asked, I got to hear details about the 10 mile tempo from high school that Burns did. <laughs> That was like, that was like last January. I mean, I don't know. I was like, that was honestly like, I don't even know. I can't say 10, for a 10 mile tempo. Yeah. Honestly, I, I did peak for a 10 mile tempo. Um, that was the time where I was running a ton of like, you know, boost, boost miles and uh, boost tempos and stuff. I would do like two by three miles at 435 or 440 in the boost or something. And then and a ton of stuff, a ton of work at five flat. And so, you know, at that point, five flat was probably the easiest that it's ever been in my life. And I just put on some vapor flies, got a nice flat trail and just went five miles out, stopped for 30 seconds to go pee, five miles back, five flat. I think I averaged like 459, but yeah, I was really happy with that. Kira asked, are they single? The hot questions from the people today. Uh, yes. Yeah, we're both single. <laughs> I do want to bring this up. I don't know if it's ever been brought up on the podcast. Connor, remember that one time I got that DM from that girl who was like, have Connor check his... What did she say? Do you remember this? Yeah. I almost set you up with a date. I want the people to know. I'm Connor Burns wingman. Uh, Angel something something said, tell them to pull up to the Model UN conference in April. Thoughts on that? But, what's that what like? Would the, the, what would the fits be? Going to Model like UN. Isn't geography thing? Like the model you in? I don't know, but you're pulling up. What are you wearing? That's my question. Yeah, I might put on like a Noah Lyles fit and I don't know, just throw on some random clothes and call the fit and people <laughs> take pictures and post them like Sidious Mag apparently. Al three something something said, who's the drippier runner? Yeah, no question. I got more drip than Connor. Just how it is. Connor, rebuttal. Uh, why he decided to brand himself with sunglasses um can't hate on that you know it's honestly some w drip okay joshua asked what? brutal people are brutal why is simeon so much better at everything simeon paid this kid to ask this question he's not, bro. <laughs> he's, yeah he's literally the fucking <laughs> industry play in that right. question connor has um fortnite right now i have like running uh, pickleball, spike ball. Buddy, you are not better than me at riz, pickleball. Uh, haircuts. You know, I don't know. You're I'm also like brain dead. <laughs> you can't. You can't do a single piece of homework as I'm gonna save your life, bro. And, like you. Okay, moving on. Cooper asked, 
Did he, and I don't know who he's referencing. We must have said something about this on a podcast. Did he, not sure he's referencing, did he end up playing club basketball? I emoji. Who said was, that? Like, One of you. It must have been a previous podcast. Someone mentioned playing club basketball in Oregon. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I might have said that, but no. I don't think Jerry would be very happy about that. Dylan asked, who wears the pants in the relationship? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dylan, you, um, you don't get to ask any more questions. Okay? You're banned from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he just said who wears the pants, but I think we all know. I just added the words at the end. I think we all know what he meant. Um, okay, let's keep going. Oh, great question from my guy Levi. Shout out Levi. I run with him like twice a week. He said, Jakob or Kerr? I want to get your take on this. Mm, Kerr's looking good right now. 20, call him a little 25 last lap. It's not 11 bad. and 1. <laughs> I agree, Dominic. Kerr's Kerr different. I mean, yeah, Jakob's the GOAT, but, you know, Kerr's Kerr's catching up there. Jakob going to be hurt for half the year, like he pretty much is, and he's still going to roll Kerr at the Olympics. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, you can say what you want. Jakob's just simply better. That's how it is. Victoria said, or asked, what are y'all's favorite cookies? Mm, I had an Oreo addiction for a while. <laughs> you did, um, yeah. I gave it. I gave them up for Lint, and I think I'm gonna stay strong in that after. So, I'm a I'm a reformed addict. Dude, I have to ask you. I have to ask you, Connor. In Texas, we had these things called. It was like more. It was like Oreo more stuffed. It was like quadruple stuffed. Have you ever had? It's like Oreo more. I think it's what. It's I have called. not. That sounds fire though. But I'm I'm on a streak right now. You can't. When you I can't say. Dude, I would admit an addiction to these two. Like, it was like you couldn't buy them because once you tasted it, it was like you just wanted more. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna Tom, pull these. Connor's out. A peak addiction was during Halloween, and he got these uh, like these orange Oreos. Oh, those were oh, uh, very it's, one. It, excuse me, it's not it's not Oreo more. It's Oreo Mega stuff. Uh, Have you had those? Uh, I don't believe so. No, I, I swear they're only in Texas, bro. Okay, I have to go to the DMs to this one. This one was asked personally. Close us out. Mrs. Burns, the goat. We love you if you're listening. She asked, why did you shave your head and make your mom cry? I, I already talked about this in the previous question, right? Pretty sure no, I did. I want you to talk directly to your mom. Apologize. <laughs> yeah, apologize. Mom, you'll get over it. Um, I might. St- I probably still love you. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll grow back out. Don't worry. Connor and Simeon, any parting words for the loyal followers, listeners of this podcast? Mm. I'll be back someday. <laughs> Hopefully. Same. Should that just be like the, you know, how we do the graphic posts? <laughs> just like, that's the quote. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll be back, we'll be back, we'll be back <laughs> should, should we do that? Uh, yeah, we should. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Connor and Simeon, appreciate it. Always love my conversations with you guys. Uh, we're 56 minutes in. We will see how much gets cut. Hope the listeners enjoyed it. And again, appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedule that I guarantee you guys would have been studying homework if it wasn't the case for doing this for podcast. For sure, for sure, yeah. We're, we're big students. Yeah. Appreciate Thanks, you guys. Thank you.